right, welcome back to the world's worst. Uh, that one's getting a little faded there. Need to get some new shirts. But welcome back to the world's worst fishing. I'm Chris Jones. We are at the post office mailing out a bunch of packages of mostly swim baits. There's some other stuff in there. But those are probably the last packages I'll get out to the post office before Christmas. So I'm hoping that everyone um, in this group gets their uh, packages before before Christmas. That's my hope um, to everyone who uh, you know um, buys some of my swim bait drops on Instagram. Thank you so much. Appreciate the support. It's not lost on me, and um, I'm glad that y'all are interested and send me some pictures of them in action. I like to see the product, uh, some of my hard work and uh, dedication get uh, out to the water, throwing up some fish. So uh, I'm gonna drop these off. I'm not saying this is technically my Christmas video, but uh, this might be the last one that I can get out before Christmas. Um, you know, the holidays are getting busier and busier as two kids and everyone's growing up and getting busier, so. Um, if it is the last video I get out before Christmas, Merry Christmas. So this is the first bass I ever caught that was big enough to mount. 24 inches in length and not really sure what she weighed. Um, I'm guessing somewhere in that seven to eight pound range, but, but check this out. I caught it when I was a little pimple faced kid in high school. Look at that. Ha <laughs> ha Oh man, what a great memory. So I caught this fish on a culprit fire and ice worm, which is just blue flake laminated with red flake. I'm pretty sure I actually hooked this fish twice. I had hung a really big bass on the cast before I caught this fish, tossing over to the same overhanging bush right there on the bank, and the fish got away. Um, made another cast and immediately hung this one. I actually jumped out of the boat in the water to land it, uh, I, I guess, safely on the bank. I didn't want to risk trying to get it into, into the little John boat. I was, I was absolutely freaking out. It's amazing how well you remember a big bass. All right, everyone, this video actually should have been done months ago. I forgot that I had this. I had bought a bunch of Jello packs, right? Which, if you hear that, they're in powder form to see if they'll make a bait, if this can be a pigment base. So it's time for one of our fun, experimental, just completely novelty videos, but this kind of stuff is so much fun to do. Uh, this reminds me a lot of particularly the Kool-Aid video where we successfully colored plastic and made functional soft plastic fishing lures with Kool-Aid powder. I'm assuming this is something really similar. No artificial sweeteners, no fructose corn syrup. Okay, so super healthy stuff here is what they want you to, okay. So yeah, it's, it's been forever since I've made Jello the right way. Okay, so that's, you can't really see. I'm curious if it's actually orange this will determine if this will work at all. Okay. Uh, hmm. I don't know if this will work. That's not orange whatsoever. But that's peach. Okay, let's open up another one. Let's open up purple. This is uh, my son Landon's favorite color. Purple! Which technically this is grape. Okay. Oh boy. These are not colored. Hmm. Do we abort mission? Is that... Oh. There's just no color to it. Those... Those look almost exactly the same. I don't... I don't know if this will work. Alright, so we've got a little spread here. This is very thumbnail-ish. Um, so looking at this stuff, there's just really no color to it. Now, you know, making Jello as a kid, you know, whenever you added water and it's set up, it's, it, it would kind of color itself, right? It's, it's been a long time. Um, so I'm wondering if maybe some sort of 
activation. Yeah, you know, so I mean, obviously it's made to go with water. Stirring cold water. Yeah, we're not we're not going to be stirring this in cold water. Yeah, they're they're really it, it doesn't really say anything about how it takes the color form from non-colored material. Um, but we're going to try our best. We're at least going to test it out. So, <laughs> fingers crossed, wish me luck. Um, here we go. So obviously the title is, can you make soft plastic lures? And more specifically, can you use it as a color base? Obviously, you can dump this in plastic. The sugar might burn. It might cause a lot of bubbles. Obviously, you can make a bait with this. But really, these, uh, I guess, challenges or experiments are to see if you can use something completely stupid as a color base. So... You know, I'm kind of on the fence here. If it doesn't work, do I even post this video? But there again, the question is, does it work? Maybe it does not work, and we have to add pigment. There again, we've still answered the question, and so I think it's still a viable video. So I just, I'm, I'm a little on the fence. Okay, moment of truth here. We're just going to start with the purple because it's already open. Like I said, this is... Uh, Landon's favorite color here. I'm just not sure there's going to be a lot of color involved. Here we go. Yeah, that's a lot right there. Oh my god, the bubbles. Hey, hey, it smells terrific. Nice, lovely grape smell. Oh, golly, look at the bubbles. Okay, it's kind of like a... <laughs> I need to... Uh, kick on the other fan, ventilate this out of here a little better. It's kind of a milky pink. Right? I, I'm not... I'm not thinking this is going to work, ladies and gentlemen. This is just not what this stuff is designed to do. Which, obviously, that's very, very, very obvious. Yeah, the bubbles have gotten worse. It's now like a, a volcano eruption of bubbles mmm I've seen some bad bubbles in my time but this this is outrageous and it's still not getting any purple wait till y'all see this mess oh oh my yeah it's not looking good that's all burnt sugar the whole cup just Oh man, this is bad. Let's let's see if we can even touch this. Oh, let's bring it over here. Oh, yeah. I think Jello's a no go. We might try one more color though, and just see. If any of this other stuff will work a little bit better but we might not even get a single bait today that would be a first for this channel but you know hey I'm bringing you guys the truth and the truth is I don't think that you should use jello okay word up here the cherry has a little bit of red hint to it so we might actually get some sort of pigmentation out of this so we're going to give this Jello one more chance to make a good impression. And what's wild is that I've done this successfully with Kool-Aid. I've done it successfully with, you know, herbs and spices from the kitchen. Uh, you know, we've put all kind of crap in plastic on this channel and gotten some sort of good-looking lure out of it. But that first Jello pack was brutal. I mean, that right there is absolute fugly. So maybe this will do a little bit better. All right, so we transferred the plastic here to a bigger cup, and uh, this is dead on plastics, of course, and uh, this is their medium durometer. <clears throat> so we transferred it to a bigger cup so that when it bubbles like crazy, there's a little bit more room for the bubbles in the cup, and hopefully it won't spill over the sides. So, yeah, I mean, right away you can see there's a little bit of, oh, man, that smells terrific. Oh yeah, okay. That is 
infinitely better than the uh, grape. This might actually have some color to it if we don't burn everything. That's the hard part is not to just completely just scorch the sugars and then you're not left with any pigment. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll still believe it when I see it. I'll be amazed if we can get something out of this, but we're gonna try. All right, that is actually after a round of, of degassing it in the microwave. So we're gonna go for another round and hopefully we're getting close. Okay, so the second attempt to get all the air out was another miserable failure. Uh, the bubbles just basically overflow the cup and that is basically all of that overflow back in the cup. You know, what I, the problem I'm running into is trying to get the plastic hot enough uh, to the right viscosity where I can really pull the air out in the vac chamber. And in doing so, I'm starting to burn some of the sugars. That's going to start turning brown. So we're going to do one more reheat to try to get it, uh, I, I guess, back up to temp to where we can get the bubbles out. You know, the problem is even really, really milking it in the microwave, you know, just little 20, 30 second intervals. I feel like I'm just gonna scorch it again before I can get the moisture out. So we're gonna keep trying though. We have faith, fingers crossed. All right, you know what? We're not even, look at this. It's like starting to set up into jello. Uh, we're not even gonna worry about bubbles because if I put it back in the vac pot, that's just going to prolong this whole disaster. We're just going to run it just like that as a ugly, bubbly mess. That way we can at least say we shot a mold today. That way we can at least say we injected some jello baits. But I think it's pretty obvious you know, the title of the video, the whole purpose, can you make soft plastics with jello? Is it a viable pigment? Can you really color plastic to any effective level whatsoever with this stuff? The answer is a resounding no, don't do it. If you wanna have some fun, go get coffee. Go get, you know, paprika. Um, try the Kool-Aid thing, cocoa powder. There are some great ways to have fun with you know food products and you know foreign materials unfortunately jello did not pass the test all right so you might remember from our uh, recent video pouring sexy shad that landophilus stole my drumsticks or scar sorry he threw them away so we're gonna have to do our drum roll with knives here we go Eh, not the same Dun, 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 dun. Oh, this is gonna be fugly. I hope y'all are ready to see the worst baits ever made on this channel. And of course they're gonna go on the wrong side. <laughs> it literally looks like Smucker's strawberry jelly, complete with the gritty little strawberry bits, you know? It reminds me if fruit by the foot, like we ate as a child in the 90s, was in the shape of a crazy hog. I don't know. <laughs> we did it. Okay, we we got something. We we actually got a bait from Cherry Jello, but uh, what an absolute disaster. The stuff does not work at all. Which you know, hey, not everything is going to work. I think I think a lot of materials that are high in, high in sugar content you're just gonna get that burnt sugar. You know, I, I think the reason why coffee does so well, you know, why uh, certain spices do so well, is because there's no sugar to burn. Um, and I think that's why I had such a hard time whenever I put candy. You know, I, I did a whole video where I just raided the candy aisle and, um, you know, had a lot of similar, similar failures, but there it is. You know, it actually held the color better than I thought. Um, but as you can see, it's kind of more of a burnt orange strawberry than this kind of traditional, you know, real rich cherry red. Obviously, I don't expect it to look like the package. <clears throat> False advertising. 
just kidding. But uh, yeah, anyway, I don't know. Th those are actual baits. Those are actual baits that you could fish. But uh, does Jello make a very successful soft plastic bait pigment? <clears throat> I don't think so. If any one of you watching is brave enough to try this at home and has better success, please let me know. I'd be really interested to know how you did it. Okay, I've been criticized in the past for not doing a taste test of lures where I put some sort of food product or flavored uh, additive, a foreign element into the plastic. So this was cherry. And I will say that before the plastic was repeatedly scorched in a microwave, it smelled like cherry. However, what does it taste like? <clears throat> it don't taste like a thing. Oh, yeah, no. The flavor did not carry over. The coffee ones actually did. You know, so if you kind of, um, you know, if, if you've been bass fishing a long time, chances are at some point you've bitten off the front of a Cinco, you know, to, to re to rehook it, um, bitten off, you know, the front of a worm where it was torn. So, you know, we've all put plastic baits in our mouths before. Let, let's be honest, you know, lead weights, things like that, horrible stuff. Um, so I don't recommend you do it just for fun, but, uh, no, there's no flavor there whatsoever. So. I'm sure the sight of me putting a bait in my mouth will be some meme content for some of my uh, haters. So enjoy that one, guys. You know who you are. That was for you. But Jello, unfortunately, was not a good, um, just, just didn't work. I've seen people put some crazy things in there. And you know, the crayons probably worked the best out of, out of all the crazy stuff. And, uh, and we've put some wild things in there. But um, Jello, unfortunately, you know, great concept, would have been super fun. I thought it would work out pretty similarly to the Kool-Aid, um, but there's just something different about it, you know, and, and the Kool-Aid powder is, is sugary too, but it held color pretty well, and uh, I didn't have quite the amount of bubbles and scorching problems. So either way, um, you know, obviously none of this stuff is practical at all, even if you can do it, but it's fun to try. That's what today's video was about, just having fun in the bait lab, doing different stuff, just trying to throw it out there to uh, kind of the, the fantasy world, you know. What can we bring into the bait shop that's completely insane and have success with? But unfortunately, I don't recommend Jello. So uh, before we sign this video off, I wanted to show you uh, some actual like real bait making, like some good stuff. So this was a really fun challenge that I took on. Um, one of the most talented painters airbrushers in the bait making game is Scott Barrow. It, it, he may pronounce it Barrow. I've never heard it pronounced, but he posted up a picture of a gizzard shad that he painted. And, you know, it had that kind of black, you know, shad dot, some gray down the center, lots of browns, that real faint green. And I tried to color match it in plastic and did pretty well. Yeah, there's the original. You might not can see the green, uh, you know, just trying to film a screen is never all that good, but there's some light green in there. And uh, I have to say, I was super pleased with how it went. So uh, that was a really fun hand pouring challenge. And uh, let's see, that's a Jetson eye there. Uh, what's that one called? It might be called, say, you know what? I don't know what it's called, but regardless, um, yeah, that's the AI six inch mold, dead on plastics, craw tube blend. And a shout out to Scott for an amazing Threadfin Shad pattern that was super fun to try to recreate. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you to anyone who watched. Uh, please like, subscribe, tell your friends, of course, recommend the video. Uh, you know, if you have any friends or family who like fishing, they might enjoy uh, a channel like mine that's just more on the kind of DIY, make your own fishing lure stuff. Um, you know, it's fun content for anyone who enjoys the outdoors. So, um, Definitely throw us some support there. And uh, like I said, Merry Christmas to everyone. Tis the season. And I hope everyone gets that good family time over the holidays. And, uh, you know, it's a good time to remember, uh, you know, family members who have passed on. And, um, you know, all the great memories that we have with those people around the holidays. But um, in any event, uh, we're out of here. 
We will see y'all in the next video. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought.